Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are back in the Milviz Corsair. It has been a long time since we've flown this aircraft. I decided we'd take it from a little spin. We got to deliver it up from uh, uh, Prescott, Arizona over to Sedona. So a short little flight, only about 35 miles, but uh, we're going to walk through all the process of flying the aircraft and uh, hopefully have a good and successful flight. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, guys. So as I said, we're just taking a real quick hop in the course here. It's been a long time. I haven't flown it in a very, very long time. And I just wanted to sort of get back in her and see where we're at these days. Oops. Give it a double click there. Didn't mean to. All right. So first thing that we're going to do is come on down. Make sure our magnetos are set to both. Da, 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 da. Make sure our fuel tank is set to reserve. Give the hydraulic pump or the primer pump a few pumps there. And then step on over to our electrical system here. Let's go battery on. External lights. There we go. Turn our fuel pump on. Let it prime for about three or five seconds. Make sure our prop is set to full prop. Prop a couple spins, get everything oiled up. All right. And now, we'll simply hit our starter. Crack our throttle a little bit. And there she comes to life. All right, looking good now. All right, we'll leave it on the reserve tanks until after takeoff. Memory serves. Got our lights set, engines up and running. Starter gonna be turned off. We're not moving, are we? No, but our RPMs are a little high. Let's bring those down a bit. The manifold pressure. And we can pull the RPM back just a little bit. We don't need to be rocking 2,000 RPMs while we're sitting here at idle. All right, so super excited to fly it again. Man, it has been a long time. Radio master on, even though we're not really gonna be using the radio. Let's set our barometric pressure. There's the altimeter coming around. Clipboard out. And we're gonna go to the loadout. We don't need two of the external tanks, so we'll just keep the center line on. Chocks can be removed. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Apparently the parking brake is ah! Stop boy! I don't know why you gotta be like this. Goodness gracious. Alright. That's alright, that's my fault. Alright, let's set the wings down. And don't worry, I'll be using track IR here today in just a minute here. I always like to get everything set up before I turn the head tracker on. I just find it to be easier to maneuver around. Alright, let's lock the wings in place. Tail wheel. Now, normally you could set the trim for takeoff. I normally just sort of fly it on takeoff. Okay. Get my flight echo here. Get some information. Wind 010 at 5 knots. So I think we're going to be taking off 
from... Oh, hey, there's a windsock right there. Alright, cool. It's that easy. Alright, let her start running. Oh, I put the chocks back on, didn't I? Which don't seem to be doing anything. Oh, I did not put the chocks on. I put the rockets on. That would explain why I didn't stop the plane. Nice. Come on. Now, I do not know if this is the most recent version of this aircraft. I will say that part as well. Because it's sort of handling a little goofy there than I remember. I remember it being very smooth and sort of... I don't know. Very rapid responses. A little weird. I don't know how to describe it. Alright, so the windsock is blown that way. So we need to take off in that direction. Makes that super easy. I do still absolutely, absolutely recommend this aircraft. This aircraft is so much fun. Corsair has always been one of my faves. Beautiful plane, that big engine, tall propeller, gull wings. I love the wings on this thing. I think that's my favorite part. Oh, we should probably close the canopy. I think Milvis did a pretty good job with the sounds on this one, too. Set uh, flaps one. Just easy takeoff here. Lined up with the runway. See, it's doing sort of a, that weird wobble thing. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be just engine vibration or if there's something different happening here. There's the brakes. So you're gonna lock that tailwheel. Let me make sure that's actually locked. Yep, to unlock tailwheel. Oh, I didn't mean to trim it. Like I said, on takeoff, um, you can trim. There are specific trim settings. I just don't use them. Um, I sort of just feel what the aircraft's doing and let it ride. So let's get airborne. <coughs> Max RPM. Looking for 55 inches of manifold pressure if memory serves. Come on, tailwind. Whoa, there it goes. Whoa, there we go. I hit that nose wheel trim. Or that vertical trim. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that was horrible. I didn't think I had that much trim in it. That sort of actually was a little weird. I gotta be honest. It's almost like we hit a speed bump. Because once we got past that certain section, the tail wheel came up, everything was fine. It was kind of odd. Alright, well, it happened. Hopefully landing will be better. Although I'm not too hopeful. <laughs> Been a long time, and I remember this one being a little on the challenging side to, to land. Manifold pressure back. Let's get those RPMs back to about 2,500. Just enjoy a nice, beautiful flight in the course here. Why do I feel like I'm like super tall? There you go. This flaps up. There she is, looking gorgeous as can be. This is such a beautiful plane. Love this plane. Just gorgeous. Must have been something to be able to fly this every day, coming off a deck. I do find trimming it to be a little bit of a pain in the rear end. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the trim, if memory serves, yeah, is very responsive, almost too so. You can't ever just get it, at least I can't. Let me not say you. I can't ever just get it sort of dialed in. 
where I can go hands free for a minute, but that's alright. We're here to fly it, right? Yeah, see, I am super close, huh? Yeah, I guess it's a little better. Beautiful day. And it really is a beautiful day in Arizona right now. Down in Tucson, we got a crap ton of wind, which pisses me off. I hate the wind. The wind is like one of those things that just absolutely ruins my day. It really does. Come on, girl. We're not changing speed that much. You are a moody lady. See what I mean? Look at that vertical velocity indicator. I'm just constantly up and down, up and down, up and down. I am terrible at maintaining altitude with this aircraft. But she's a ton of fun. That's what I was saying, though. I'm not positive that I'm on the latest version. Because it's just, it seems a little... Not buggy, but choppy, maybe? Like, there are certain flight aspects that feel like it's on rails where they didn't used to. I remember it used to be super smooth. I mean, this was, this was my go-to plane in VR. This is one of the coolest planes to fly, like, over in the Pacific Islands or, uh, you know, even down in the Caribbean. Like, just a little bit of trim nose down. Look what it's doing. I mean, it just dies. It's very odd behavior. Oh, you know what? Crap, we need to switch our tank. So I am noticing some odd behavior. It's definitely an aircraft that uh, won't let me let go of it. I'm letting it climb for just a second, honestly. I am checking my cell phone. <laughs> we need to get above the mountains anyway. What are we doing right now? 180 knots, almost 200. In a climb, not bad. Manifold pressure. I'm probably running a little high still, honestly, but that's all right. I like to run a little fast. I always like taking my flights quickly. Although, you know what? I'm going the wrong way. I just looked at the compass. I'm like, I'm not seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing. Whoops. That's all right. Make the flight a little longer. We're only going a whopping 40 miles, so... I'm going to have to really work on my cameras, man. I just feel like I can't get my cameras dialed into where I want them to be. One minute I feel like I'm too too up front in the cockpit, and then I feel like I'm too far back. I mean, yeah, my head's like in the seat now. Ah! There, that's about what I'm looking for. I'll take it for now. Is what it is, right? That's another pretty shot. Grabbing a screenshot. I think this is the one I'm going to use for the video today. Man, she's a dream. There we go. There's the valley I was looking for. The dirt's getting red. We're getting close. Red dirt gives it all away. If you haven't had the chance and you guys get the chance, I highly recommend a, a trip to Sedona. Very beautiful area. Very beautiful. It's become a little bit more populated than it used to be, but... You guys say we take it down low and mess around a little bit. Speed. 
passing 250. There we go. That's how we do this. Rip it and rip it. It's just the elevator trim. The elevator trim is super sensitive, specifically nose down. Watching those temperatures. State, good, right on track. Right where we're supposed to be. It should take us almost straight to Sedona. This canyon takes us right to the airport almost. When we first got the simulator, I used to love flying up here. There's something really beautiful about it. A lot of scenery changes. From the greens to the reds to the water. A little bit of everything up here. It's really nice. up on top of that flat hill up there. What's our wind direction showing? Zero four zero eight. to be. So we'll come back around again here. Let's do a quick circle around the airfield. We'll see if I can crash, I mean land a Corsair. Pretty airport. I like that it's up on the hill like that. Landing location, so let's start slowing our plane down. So let's uh, let's do flaps two. We're gonna 
extend out a little bit. I'm always terrified when I'm landing this plane, so I want to give myself plenty of time for a gentle approach. I'm going to pull the RPMs back a bit, help slow her down. Take some of the bite out of the propeller here for a minute. to somewhat maintain altitude. Not doing a very good job of it at the moment, am I? Alright. Let's put the prop back in. Add some manifold pressure back in. Runway way out there. Gear coming down. Collapse 3 and 4 coming in. I am going to just try a three-point landing here. I'm already nervous enough about landing it. I know a lot of people don't like the three-point landings. They say we should be doing main wheel. But I'm terrible on main wheel landings on a good runway or on a long runway. So sometimes you just have to own up to uh, what your skill level will let you do. approach so far. Ooh, get some turbulence. Wow, just bled that airspeed off real fast. Come on, come back in. Pull it off. Bouncing. Dancing the rudder pedals, dancing those rudder pedals. Come on. Rolling that right wing back down. Oof. Oof. Come on. Full aft on the stick. We're off the runway. <laughs> oh, man. Corsair shenanigans. That's what this is. I'd like to uh, thank all of you for joining me for Corsair shenanigans because that's exactly what just happened here. We got her down in one piece though. But uh, yeah, that was meant to go better. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. It was just fun to get up and fly it again. And uh, I think we'll be seeing uh, clearly more of the Corsair in the future because. Uh, I'm out of practice. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.